Hi folks, we've been looking at this book and on preaching and the sufficiency of scripture and I just want to share with you my experience of what happens when you don't take scripture seriously. One seminary that I studied at for four years, the students were taught that philosophy, sociology and psychology uh, and new ways of thinking could be added to scripture. A whole generation of young people left that seminary, went into uh, pastorates and hadn't got a clue what they were doing because they didn't have a foundation. So if you don't believe in the sufficiency of scripture, then it's going to have disastrous, disastrous results in your theological education and in the preaching and ministry to the church. I went to another seminary and the seminary professors some were, were completely against the Bible, some were uh, gay and all the rest of it. I saw a whole generation of ministers growing up and leaving who thought they were smart and clever, who thought truth was anything what you made it, who were not concerned about truth and error. And basically, um, walking around as if they're sophisticated intellectuals and cultured people, but they're walking around churches that are dead, confused, and have gone off the rails. If you don't believe in the sufficiency of Scripture, you shouldn't be preaching. If you don't believe in the sufficiency of Scripture, you shouldn't be preaching. You should leave it and go back to doing what you did before. For those who are in the ministry and preaching today, the church, many in the church don't want the full counsel of the word of God. But you've not been called to, to pamper to the world and pamper to the church. You've been called to preach the messages that God has given you. So you must preach those messages. Once you've prayed and asked God what you should preach on from his word, once you've studied his word, you just preach it. And if you've been discouraged, maybe the church has battered it out of you, saying they don't want your sermons because it's too biblical. Well, you need to take some rest, recuperate, and you need to go back and you need to preach the word. But you cannot compromise on the word of God. There are many ministers today in denominations where their bishop or supervisor are denying the word of God. They are saying that we need to add tradition. They are saying that psychology and sociology helps us to understand moral issues better than the Bible. And you have compromised. You have not spoken out. You have not said anything. You have kept quiet because you wanted to keep your nice house or you wanted to keep your nice job. Well, God didn't call you into the ministry to keep your nice house your nice job, your nice salary. He called you into the ministry to preach his word. And you've got to get back on your knees and say, Lord, I failed. I compromised. To keep my job, to keep in with the bishop, to keep in with the people who were above me, I, I compromised. I, I didn't speak out. You need to speak out. Things have got too bad now. And you've got to, you've got to make an, a stand. Write that open letter to the bishop and rebuke him for saying that morality, the new morality of today is okay. Rebuke him. Write that open letter to your supervisor so that all the congregation might read it. And rebuke them and say, no, you've compromised. I'm not going to compromise. There are some basic issues that you cannot compromise on. And you've compromised on them. You're, you are to be loyal to the Bible. You are to be loyal to Jesus. If people in, in the time of Nero, when he put Christians on torches and burnt them alive, how can you compromise the word of God when they gave their life for Jesus? When, when Latimer and Ridley were burnt at the stake, how can you compromise? 
when William Tyndale was strangled to death for believe for translating the Bible in English. How can you compromise? How can you compromise? When Charles Simeon, a preacher of the Word of God at Cambridge, was locked out of his own church and endured persecution for over twelve years, suffered by his own people, but he still preached, how can you compromise? When John Nelson, a Yorkshire preacher in the 1700s, was locked up and his wife was walking down the road at night to go and visit him in jail and a, and a crowd set upon her and beat her up and she lost her baby that she was pregnant with. But they still went on preaching the gospel. How can you compromise? It's time. It's a time not to compromise. It's a tired to stand up against prime ministers. It's a tired to stand up against bishops. It's a tired to stand up and be counted and say, No, enough's enough. Enough's enough. I will not compromise. I am standing on the word of God. I am standing for my Lord. I will not compromise. How can you compromise? It's time that you put the word of God above your own reputation. It's time you put Christ above your nice little life. Your nice little life that you've built. What are you going to do? Wouldn't you rather die in poverty and obscurity knowing that you defended the faith. Then having a wonderful life. But compromise that you never spoke out. For Jesus. I went to church today. And I heard a, 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 min, a, a minister who was in the Salvation Army. And the head of the Salvation Army a few years ago was being very dogmatic about communion and saying that they shouldn't have communion regularly and this man who was a superintendent of many many churches in the north of England wrote an open letter saying that he felt that the leader of the Salvation Army was wrong and the leader ousted him and he lost his job and the supervisor lost his job and he lost his pension God provided him with a pension afterwards but it cost that supervisor of a, of a district to challenge the head of the Salvation Army with too many people in the denominations and in evangelicalism and in, in, in charismatic and Pentecostal churches too many people are compromising the word of God enough's enough enough's enough you need to draw a line and in the sand and say I'm not compromising anymore you need to draw a line in the sand concerning the governments of these of this world they are clearly aiming to take over the church they are cl clearly aiming especially in the West to dominate the churches with their secular morality you need to draw a line in the sand and say enough's enough we cannot compromise you are not the head of the church Jesus Christ is the head of his church and you are overstepping your mark we will not compromise the sufficiency of scripture is at the very heart of the church of the Christian life and of Christian ministry and preaching and you as a preacher have been called to the greatest task that man can ever do. Preach the word of God. You may not and must not compromise at this very hour. The eternal destiny of men and women and boys and girls lies in your hands. And if you dare compromise you make shipwreck not only of your own faith but of many others. So renew your vow, renew your ministry, 
and preach like you preach to dying men as a dying man. Okay? God bless you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for all the pastors and preachers today that you've called them to a wonderful ministry. Lord, I pray uh, that they would pull back on your word, that they would begin to get into your word and minister the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit. But may it be your word, not men's tradition, not men's experience, not men's scholarship, not the culture of the day. But may they proclaim the word of God, the eternal word, everlasting and all-powerful. May they proclaim your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, preachers. Go shake the nations. I want to hear the nations shaking under the power of your preaching. In the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the mighty hand of our God. God bless you.